What's good everybody, Jeff here. I have been looking forward for this video for a long time now. So far, we have made the Deagle, the Og, XM1014, Max7, MP5, and DSG, and of course, more recently, the Revolver. But here's the thing, all of those weapons were either new at the time, like the MP5 or the Og, or they were, let's say, exotic. In today's video, we are looking into a weapon way more common and known. Everybody uses it, the OP, a WP4 Ortic Warfare Police? Okay. I used to consider myself more of a sniper. I've always loved the possibilities and the sensations that you get from playing with the OP. The very loud sound, the satisfying mechanic from the bolt action rifle, and the potential flicks that you will hit. All of those combined have made the OP one of the most satisfying weapons to play with. Yet, it's far from being one of the easiest to use. The OP is the perfect example of easy to learn but hard to master. You know what you have to do, but it's still hard to do it right. It's getting real now, no more sloppy movement, no more slow reaction time, you are not handling a fucking P90, you're handling the most powerful weapon of this game, also one of the most expensive. So what is there to know about the OP? Number one, money, money, money. The OP is expensive, very expensive, and unless you sell your kidneys, you will have to comply with a very frugal lifestyle. Number two, you need a pistol, in case you're getting rushed or if you like one of them, you have to have a pistol on the side. You can pick pretty much the one you want, except for the CZ, for this very simple reason, it takes too long to pull out, and that's never good. Number three, movements. You're on the target and you're about to fire. But somehow, you gently blow on the left a row and boom, you missed. Just like that. Your movements have to be sharp. Playing with the OP doesn't mean you have to be static. In fact, it fits the defense just as well as it fits the attack. But it's mandatory to be standing still at the perfect moment you are pressing the left click. And lastly, the precision. Like, the thing is, it's not like you have to learn a spray pattern. Like, it's a single shot. Hit a miss. And I guess they never miss, huh? <laughs> I guess it's easier explained this way. Standing still? Yes. Crouch walking? Yes, no scoping is always going to be random, however, you can maximize your chances. Crouching helps, for example. And jump shooting, well, surprisingly enough, you can hit some decent no-scope jump shots with the OP. I find myself hitting those shots quite often in the end, and eventually this will save one of your rounds. Anyway, I believe that this is enough fury for now, I will kindly remind you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and to click the bell to not miss any of my future videos, and we're gonna get right into it. Hello! Hello team. Fantastic, someone says hello team. I'll go towards mid. Oh, that dude has a long spawn. This is a spawn which isn't really common, by the way. It's pretty rare to have it. Short guy is coming. Uh oh, the Deagle guy is long now. The guy who buys Deagle in the pistol around always surprised me. You don't have a Kevlar if you buy it at this around. I don't understand. It's like they all want to be Nico, but obviously you can't just be Nico like this. Okay, so this step is important. Second round, we have on the first round. What you want to do is you want to buy yourself a helmet. A helmet, a Kevlar, then a pistol, and nothing else. And it's also very important for you to survive this round because if you die, you will have to reinvest 1000 into your helmet and Kevlar. Did it go back to lower? Nice. And now, since I did not die, I'm able to buy myself an O. Oh, and I chose a lightning strike because, you know, it's, it's just gorgeous. I'll give myself a smoke and a flash to play with as well. And again, <laughs> I'm gonna have to stay alive. So I'm gonna smoke mid this way. So I can cross me without any problems. And I'm gonna hold the right corner mid. One down. You see, this is a very easy way to get yourself an entry frag. And those make a big difference. And then you just go back, no need to be greedy. Might just be the hardest thing for me to do, but don't be greedy. One down. Mid out, bomb. Bomb out, mid to B. I'm gonna hold it like this, so I see if he goes back. Holding that line here allows me to know whether or not he goes back on site. He's still on site or window, but watch out. Oh, the timing, dude. Well done. It's always like this, isn't it? Okay, they've planted the bomb, which means they will start winning a bit more money as well. They might force again this round. Um, 
You know what? Let's take a quick second to recap the new money cycle that has been newly changed. I'm going to call Jeff from the future to explain that. Okay, so from now on, there's a memory system called loss bonus that you can see when you press tab. Because I want to avoid drowning you in numbers, I will advise you to memorize it this way. This is the money cycle. Every win gets you $3,250. If you lose a round, you begin on the lower steps of the ladder and you will win $1,400. For every new loss, you will add $500 until you reach the cap. So it's kind of like a ladder with five steps, but keep in mind though that both pistol rounds will begin here on the ladder at $1,900. It used to be 1400s, not anymore. So the difference is that now, instead of going back to the minimum win after a reset, you will now go down to only one step below on the ladder. So if you're having five losses in a row, then you win a round, you're going one step below to a bonus of $2,900. And if you lose this round, this is exactly what you will win instead of going back to $1,400 previously. So I reckon this is a lot of numbers and that's coming from someone who dropped out of school, but I would advise you to memorize it this way because it works kind of like a ladder. Back to you, Jeff from the past. Well, as always, Jeff, you explain things the way no one else could. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to myself. Stop it. I'll flash myself before repicking. I'm a bit more aggressive this time. Well, I am the last one holding mid slash B. If I die, it's over. I am the protector of the realm. Damn it. So, I have a bit of money to spare. I'm gonna get myself a kit for once. I'm not gonna smoke mid this time. I don't think they will have an nope. Well, they have scouts. Lol. Then it means I'm gonna take the lower pick. Like this. I have failed. Flash myself out again. They're gonna keep on facing me, I believe. Mid doors? Oh, I will bang them. Good. Oh, yeah, it's B push, it's B push. Fuck. One's close. I'm gonna molly the default side this way. Nice. Flashing. Down. Uh, plateau last. Well, I have 12k. They are probably gonna buy a case, so I'm gonna save a bit of money. Instead of investing on the full 1k, I'll just get myself a Kevlar. I'll pick lower again. I'm gonna double zoom to see a bit better. Come on. As soon as you have a frag, you have to go back. And if the smoke fades, you also have to go back before it fades, obviously. Uh, bomb down. Well, and since this time I haven't lost any point on Kevlar, I can upgrade my helmets for only 350. And this time it's worth it. So I'll take it. I'm gonna get myself a kit and a pistol, and we're good to go. Hmm, could be one behind the door. So what I'll do is I'll just keep my crosshair. In case he picks. Good, good, good. Stop mid. Well, we are doing it perfect so far. This is good. Ah, oh, fucking hell. <laughs> well, to be fair, I'm not even surprised. All right, this means that from now on, I will always smoke mid doors to avoid this scenario again. I've seen many people that keep saying, oh, I keep getting tagged through the doors. Hey, buddy, throw a smoke. And you're good to go. It's pretty simple, like, bounce it against pretty much anything. Cross through the smoke. And you're not getting hit. I watch, I watch middle. Check tunnel. On B. Could be one more. I'll flush myself. Alright, so this is something I wanted to talk about, but I actually forgot while I was recording. If you want to pick a corner, you will have different options, of course. The basic one would be that you simply walk out, wait, and shoot. Of course, this is bad. It really depends on the corner you're picking, but in the end, there's a few ones that you will always use. Number one, crouch, walk, and pick. This one is very simple. Basically, crouch, go to the right, double zoom in, and keep your crosshair wherever the enemy is going to be. It's that simple. The only downside is that you are very slow and you might get destroyed. Number two will be crouch pick. This one is a bit trickier, but not too complicated either. So I'm going to slow down the time so that I can show you. There you go. The crouch pick is very basic. You want to run with your weapon in hand, 
At the corner, I'm gonna start crouching here and resuming at that moment. This is what you want to do. And with the momentum that you gain, you'll be able to shoot instantly even though you're still moving fast. Only thing that you have to learn though is where to place your crosshair. And this is no mystery. You will have to practice, try a couple times, and make sure you have it right. Number three would be the standing up pick. Basically, if I want to pick that corner, I can either walk left and try to get him, but this one is going to be harder. What I really like to do instead is to crouch so that I'm hidden, double zoom in a little bit below than the corner, and when I stand up, I'm going to be right on the guy. And this is extremely efficient in CSGO. All right, turn two, they are planting A. I'll make sure I don't cross back too short, too long though. Down long. Last one's got to be on site, I'll wait for you. On site, on site, on site. Car down. One more, close. That's perfect, those gaps in the smokes are perfect for me. One mid. Down. Oh my. No! Ah, I should have played that differently. My bad. Short. Oh, one is out of Vito. Lower, and it's B. Down mid. We have one in short. Lower. Ah, double side, double boxes. And now I am broke. So look, quick math. 2.2, and I have 1.9. The next round, I'm gonna win 500 more, which is 2.4, 2.2 and 2.4, eh, I'm fucked. So, I'll get myself a Zeus, and I know that either way, I won't be able to buy open the next round. Well. And as I've said, I don't have enough to buy right now, so I'll have to eco one more. But this time, I don't have to eco as much, so I'll see that my teammates are buying weapons. Uh, that's a very tough choice, really. Um, I got myself a scout, and that's all. I'm not gonna buy anything else. So the scout is quite like the Ope, except you can run faster, and the damages are not as good. I have to have at least one frag. Fuck. The short guy is missing, though. Down. Nice. Last. Here, hit. Nope. <laughs> Plus, I get myself a nope. This is perfect. This is the dream scenario. Nah, he picked up. Well, I reckon it could have been better because I've missed a couple of shots here and that cost us a round. Again, second round, I'm just gonna get myself a Kevlar helmet, a pistol, and that's all I'm gonna buy. Also, I have to say a lie, so I'm not gonna play the hero on this specific round. Oh my god, I'm sorry. I have a proper long stone. I'm gonna pick long. So I'll go for the quick pick, get my weapon, crouch, double zoom, and go back because I'm getting destroyed by nades. Well, so far we haven't really talked about the switching or not switching mechanic, uh, which is basically firing and then call back your weapon. Um, I personally play with the arrows. On my keyboard, when I press 1, it calls back the weapon I previously used, so I just have to double tap it like this. And to get this out of the way, it doesn't improve your fire rate. You're still shooting at the same speed, you're still moving at the same speed. However, if you want to unzoom and turn around, for example, this is very useful. In the end, if you want to talk about a skilled O player, it's not like he had to learn a spray pattern or, you know, it's most likely going to be the movements and the flicks. Like, the crosshair placement is also very important, but in the end, the movement, in my opinion, is the number one point about the open. Oh, I guess I'm gonna place a smoke like this. Uh... I'm just gonna wait the corner. One more in pit. This is a very useful smoke, by the way. Down. I'll flash. I wish he had a flash because there's got to be a gap in here. Could you flash? Oh, we're getting backstab. Nah, nah, nah. 
Got him! Oh. There you go. Only two guys left. I can show you guys a one way smoke. Hold on. So, there's like this uh, thing. Line up in the middle. Turn around. And it will throw here. Above the window. Here. And then... You zoom in. And you finish in beauty! That was glorious. <laughs> And lastly, because I kind of forgot to talk about it, because I've seen some of you guys noticing that I don't have blood in my game. Somehow, you will never see blood stains on the wall when I shoot or when I see the guys and stuff. So there's a reason for that. This is a command that I use. You can see it right now. And this is what it does. Basically, the blood stains are very annoying. It, it really cripples your visibility. And I have bound this command to my key that makes me go forward. So basically, every time I press forward, the command gets executed and every trace of blood or impact goes away and I get to see way much better. All right, my friends, that's gonna be it for this video and I would like to thank you once more for all the support I've been receiving lately. Also, here's a reminder that there's a playlist of those videos. I've made many more of those. Some are meant to be entertaining, some are meant to be educational. Sometimes I find the right balance, but I hope you will enjoy them nonetheless. Thank you very much for watching, my friends. I will see you guys in the next one.